Hey there, podcast listeners. This is Isaac with the Real Christian Manliness Podcast. I just want to let everybody know, like we said in one of our last episodes, that we're going to start a discipleship program on the podcast. It'll be a 14-week, maybe 15-week uh, podcast series on discipleship. And we're going to do that by going through a curriculum through Striving Together publication called Continue. And so what I'd like for all you to do right now is go over to strivingtogether.com and look for the Continue Discipleship Curriculum and order it so that you can have it when we start the podcast. It'll be a pretty substantial workbook with fill-in-the-blanks and different projects and different assignments for you to do every week. And if you follow along, you'll be able to get a lot through this discipleship program. Um, So go over to strivingtogether.com and get the Continue Curriculum. And for listening to the podcast, they've given us a 10% off coupon code. So when you check out at strivingtogether.com, you'll put CONTINUE10 in the coupon code, CONTINUE10, and you'll get 10% off uh, that workbook. So I believe we're going to start the first Monday in October. So go ahead and get that ordered, and uh, you'll have plenty of time to get that in. So whenever we start, you'll be raring and uh, ready to go to work in that workbook. Tim and I are excited to team up with uh, Mr. John Tyler out of Lancaster Baptist Church, who's a uh, works in the discipleship ministry there, and so he's been so kind and gracious to work with us on this project. So go over to strivingtogether.com and uh, get the uh, Continue Workbook and use the coupon code CONTINUE10 at checkout. Now let's get on to the show. This is the Real Christian Manliness Podcast with Isaac and Tim Ingram. Let's get manly. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. This is Isaac Ingram, and I have my brother Tim Ingram down in Texas on the phone, and we also have a special guest today, Brother Tim Treber. Brother Tim, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you very much. So where, where are you at now? Uh, we, were, we were saying before the show that we don't know much about you, so let, let's start there. Sure. Where are you at now? Currently, I'm in my house, in my office, and uh, in Surprise, Arizona, so we are about Oh, 35 miles northwest of Phoenix. Okay. And uh, we've, we've been living down here the last many months. And uh, so that's where we're at right now. Let's get ready to get our church started. Awesome. I was down in Surprise about two years ago. I got a Marine buddy of mine. He's a recruiter in the Surprise area. Yeah. And so we were, we were just down there. It was like 118 degrees on the day we were there. <laughs> So oh, you got you got us on a cool day then, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my, my my wife and I had intended on doing some outdoor things there. Have you ever heard of geocaching? Uh, uh, I've heard of that. A little it's it's kind of yeah. like sca- scavenger hunting with right. the GPS, and so we were there at about nine o'clock, and it was peaking over a hundred degrees. And like <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna find a museum or something, and <laughs> yeah, we'll go we'll go inside and do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been uh what have you been up to in Arizona? So we're right now have just been, um, we've done a couple of things. One is that we've been kind of using uh, Surprise as our base for travel. We've done a little bit of uh, raising some support for our church plant. And so we basically came down here uh, to run the area and uh, get used to Surprise in the Phoenix Valley, uh, meet some other folks that are here. And so the reason for us being down here for the duration of our time uh, has just been to uh, travel, bring support, get to know the area, and basically do all the legworks behind the scenes of getting the church started from this point. Okay, so can we get backtrack just a little bit, and can you give us a little, like a brief testimony of yourself for anybody that doesn't know you, and how you got to starting a church? We don't know you. (laughs) Sure thing. Uh, So I was born and raised in California, the area actually. Uh, my dad's been pastor there at North Valley Baptist Church for 42 years, I guess. Uh, was born and raised there, went to elementary school, junior high, high school, college, and then I worked the last 12 years on staff with my dad as youth pastor. Um, so got saved when I was 12 years of age uh, at the end of a, a revival meeting at our church. And uh, when I was uh, 19 years of age, I surrendered to preach. 
uh, at a chapel service that we were having when I was in college. And uh, from there, I didn't really know what that meant for me as far as being a preacher. Uh, that, that first door of opportunity was to be a youth pastor. Um, God began working on my heart uh, several years ago about the pastorate. And uh, I always felt like I would take a church and not start one. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but God had other plans for us. And so we have uh, we've made the move down here and we're in the process of getting our church started. Grand opening service is October 1 uh, of this year. And so that's a little bit about me. I've got a wife. I don't know why she married me. She's a beautiful woman. <laughs> and I've uh, been married eight years and four kids, uh, a seven-year-old Landon, a five-year-old Lawson, a three-year-old Logan, and a five-month-old baby girl, Lakin. So that's a little bit about us. Nice. You must have been a pastor's son with all that alliteration. <laughs> yeah, you know it. Exactly. Right. Yeah, <laughs> my name is Isaac Isaiah Ingram, and then my brother is Timothy Titus Ingram. So There you uh, go. <laughs> I, you get the double alliteration, though. That's pretty tough to do. I know. It's it's interesting. So, <laughs> <laughs> so how, how long have you been? You may have mentioned it, and I may have glazed over it. How long have you been preparing to start a church? Yeah, so we moved down here for good uh, back in January and uh, have been just in the process of going to different churches, raising some uh, support, and then also um, getting our, our building secured, uh, doing all of our behind the scenes stuff legally they get set up for a church plant mm-hmm. and um, just meeting people and uh, getting to know the area and so all that stuff has taken time which is a lot of those things I didn't even realize you had to do mm-hmm. and start a church uh, but it's been a bit of a process and now we're ready we've been doing Bible studies the last uh, last, last month we started back in August and so we do that for eight weeks uh, leading up to our grand opening service uh, on October 1st Awesome. You said October 1st is your opening day? Yes, sir. Awesome. All right, so if anybody is out there in the Tucson, not Tucson, uh, Surprise, Arizona area, and you're looking for a church home, you should definitely check it out. What's the name of your church? Hillview Baptist Church. And Hill- our our website is hillviewbaptist.church. Great. So what, what type of things... Um, in the process of starting a church surprised you that you weren't aware of, sure. whether just uh, difficulties or just legal things that you never would have thought about? Yeah, the uh, for us, for me, the, uh, the surprise was uh, getting set up legally with IRS stuff, uh, the, the county uh, being recognized as a 501c3, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we had to, had to hire a little bit of uh, some lawyers as far as making sure that we're all legally structured, church constitution, bylaws, basically all the things that we need to do to protect ourselves in the case of yeah. an unfortunate emergency, you know. So that that was something that I wasn't uh, necessarily ready for uh, I didn't, because I didn't know what to expect. Thankfully, there has been some good people around me that have handled all that stuff for us. And so basically for me, all I've had to do is sign the dotted line on the things like that. So that's been a huge blessing. That's nice. So are you are you kind of jumping in this solo with your family, or do you have anybody there helping you out? Yeah, so right now uh, we do have a husband and wife that's moved down with us uh, to help us out. And wow. They've been a huge blessing. And then also uh, within the last, I guess, two months or so, a family uh, has joined us as well. And so they're coming. They're here. They've got a house all situated, ready to go. So those two families uh, for sure are going to be here. For the foreseeable future, and then also there are um, there's a a man that's got a, a ministry that goes out and helps church planners for about six months at a time, mm-hmm. and uh, he and his wife are going to be joining us that first Sunday of August, uh, excuse me, October, and they'll be with us for about six months and helping us out door knocking, soul winning, um, you know, children church workers that type of stuff. So um, those are people that have. You know, basically be part of what we're calling our start team, launch team, and uh, helping us get started. And then there's a couple other families here in the area that we've met that are, you know, been there at our Bible studies every week and uh, hopping in and uh, being able to be a blessing to our church uh, from the standpoint of volunteering their time, music, and that type of stuff. So God's been good and uh, they've been blessing, and so we're grateful for that. Wow, that's awesome. That that must be really nice having a, a launch team like that, a startup team. 
yeah, for sure. It's been a huge blessing uh, for me. That was one of my prayer requests uh, when we announced that we were going to be starting the church. Because when we got started, it was just me and my wife. You know, we just stepped out by faith and then just kind of just prayed those people in. Mm -hmm. And that to have them come on board with us has just been a, a huge blessing, answer to prayer, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know uh, as missionaries, whenever we first got over there, there weren't any... Um, any Americans necessarily, at least not of our exact, you know, stripe. Sure. Um, we found some that were, I think, some Pentecostals and things like that, but we couldn't necessarily do any ministry with them. Right. So, uh, so I bet that's even in even in an American city, starting off fresh, uh, that's got to be nice sure. to have uh, that camaraderie of of people starting starting things with you. Yeah, exactly. Just having some people, you know, around you that you can fellowship with, and you're like minded. Um, that goes a long way. Mm -hmm. you, know, you would know be on the mission field, just having somebody else to talk to, to go out to get a bite to eat with. It's, yeah. it's a huge, huge, incredible blessing. That's for sure. So how, how did you decide on uh, the surprise area to start a church? Uh, the Phoenix Valley has always been on my heart. Uh, even when I was back in California, I was working there. For whatever reason, you know it had to be God that brought me down to Phoenix because no person in their right mind is going to leave the cool climate <laughs> of the Bay Area to go to the desert where it's extremely, extremely hot. Yeah. Um, but when God just be, began working on my heart, it's a growing area. Uh, Phoenix is uh, the fifth largest city in America. Um, and this whole area of Maricopa County, over 4 million people, and it's just growing. It's one of, it's one of the fastest growing areas um, in our nation. So. Hmm. We, uh, as we began to pray about it, God just made it more clear. Uh, there are area, there are other Baptist churches here in our area as far as driving distance, but um, the more that we came and saw the area, we were we got burdened for the West Valley. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. And uh, we drove around, prayed about it. Uh, we knew somebody that was originally from here, and just in kind of casual conversation, they would mention that, hey, you got to go to Surprise, Arizona, start a church. When I was already praying about coming to Phoenix Valley specifically, and so uh, that type of thing, and seeing that there was a need here in the West Side, uh, God just led us that direction. So, uh, how far along are you as far as like finding a place to meet and different like right. logistical things and starting the church? So we already have our uh, we're going to be meeting at elementary school to start with. It's about a mile and a half from our house. It's a great location. It's uh, in between two major uh, roads that most people would be aware of that are down here. Uh, we've been meeting there the last four weeks on Thursday nights for our Bible studies. And so it's allowed us to have a little bit of a presence in the community uh, for people knowing that there's going to be a church that's coming there. We've done the advertising. Uh, we've you know, been passing out invitations, talking to people. Um, so where we're at right now, we've got our building secure. We've got our stuff. As far as uh, equipment that we need, songbooks, chairs, lighting, uh, pianos, and, and things like that. Uh, so we're just we're just ready now to get started, and uh, looking forward to that grand opening service on the first. So, um, how big of a space do you have? It's just a classroom, or, or something like that, or? So what we're using right now it's a multi-purpose room, uh, multi-purpose building actually, and um, so we use. Basically, it's the cafeteria uh, where the uh, kids have lunch. It's got a, a you know platform stage area uh, that we can use during during the, uh, the service, and then just off of the uh, the room that we're going to be using, uh, it's got a couple classrooms that we're able to use for the nurseries and also for our children's ministry. But it's a nice it's a nice facility. It's a newer school. Um, I want to say maybe eight years or, or newer. Wow. And uh, so if you don't have that rundown feel of, you know, hey, they're just stuck in an elementary building. Yeah. It's, a, it's a newer, nicer one. Um, it's still fairly clean. And uh, with, with kids on that property every single day during the school year, that might change quickly. Hmm. Uh, but it's, it's still nice. It's clean. <laughs> and uh, it allows us to, uh, to have that meeting space and the opportunity to grow there. Awesome. So do you, do you have um, like a time frame or, or maybe a number of – charter members and and when that will happen or or what's what's the consideration there yeah for us what we're going to plan on doing is about six months in uh we'll we'll do a charter service um the, re the reason behind that i know right now is that we already are a church 
Mm -hmm. we, we have people coming. Um, but just want to kind of use the uh, leverage the excitement of being a new church as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I know when it's old, it's no longer no longer new. So we want to keep that new feel just as long as we can. And then what we'll do is we'll about six months in, we'll have a charter service, and uh, and we'll just go from there. Yeah. So. I, I remember in a church ed class them saying that new things grow faster than old things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of the podcast is brought to you by Spreeza Box. Spreeza Box is a subscription box that gives you effortless style for about $28 a month. Each month you'll get a box that helps keep you dapper with ties, socks, sunglasses, grooming products, and other high-quality accessories, which total every month over $100 in each box. Each month you'll get five to six items that are hand-picked by a personal stylist. And if you're like me and you like to wear a suit and tie to church, this is a great way to add a splash of color to your wardrobe. Update your look and support our show by going to spreezabox.com, and when you check out, use the coupon code INGRAM10 for 10% off your subscription. That's INGRAM10 when you check out at spreezabox.com. Today's episode is made possible by Blue Apron. Blue Apron lets you cook a meal in your very own home without having to go to the grocery store. Inside each box are farm-fresh ingredients and a step-by-step -step instruction sheet for cooking a delicious meal in your own kitchen. You will get the exact amount of each ingredient required in the instructions so that there's no measuring and no waste when you're done. So why leave your home and go to the grocery store when the grocery store can come to you for about $9 per meal? Try out Blue Apron and help support the show by using the link in the show notes. You'll get about $30 off your first six meals, and that's about half off your first order. Make sure that you use the link so you can save on these delicious meals and help out the podcast. Now let's get back to our show. So what, what type of things um, transferred over from North Valley as far as um, methods or anything like that? And what type of things are completely new from, from a new church yeah. standpoint? Um, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is the size. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a lot different. You know, we had our first Bible study um, back in August. And we had 34 folks come to that, which was... Which, wow. was, which was great. You know, we didn't know, I didn't know what to expect. And uh, so there's 34 people that, you know, we didn't really know that came to the, uh, the Bible study. So I was excited, you know, and, and, and rightfully so. I was encouraged. And, um, you know, that, that mindset of coming from a larger church, uh, the people, not, not in everybody, but there would be some maybe that would think, you mean you'll have already thousands of people come to your church? What, what's wrong with you? So the mindset in a church plan is, is very different. Um, uh, the people that come, the people that come to your church plan are different. Uh, as far as you know, you're gonna attract all types of people. So, and I love that. I love the fact that you know there are some people that just they're not used to you know your typical independent Baptist church of how it's quote unquote supposed to be, mm -hmm. and. They have just an authenticity about them that's just so awesome and so yeah. challenging and convicting, and they don't they don't know they don't know all the I don't want to use the word politics, but they don't know all the things that you're supposed to do and the things you're supposed to say. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we had one of our guys that's been coming, and uh, just a great guy. He just didn't grow up in a, a, a Christian background at all. Got saved later on in life, and uh, just. In, in casual conversation before the Bible study one day, he was uh, he was talking to me and he, he told me about what one of his coworkers was saying and using a, a, a swear word in the in the process of that <laughs> and uh, and just was quoting his coworker. But there was no no there was nothing um, even in his mind that was remotely thinking that oh, I did something wrong or should yeah. have said that. He was just quoting what his his uh, coworker told him. So I love that about our. Uh, about people from the church plant, it's just that you get a real, authentic, uh, uh, genuine you know, feel for what really what, what ministry is, and it's almost like going back in time mm. for me uh, of what it was like in that first century church and just trying to reach people, you know. And that's not to say that you know our church that I that I came from is wrong. We, I praise God for what all yeah. we've done, um, and a lot of things that I learned there, I'll 
would definitely be incorporated here mm-hmm. uh, in the church. Yeah, I definitely appreciate authenticity, and and that's kind of the the word that I. I wish authenticity was shorter because I'd put that in the yeah. name of the podcast and because right. the, the name is real Christian pod, you know, real Christian manliness. But um, it is true about an older, established, you know, church. You you get the the old saints, the right. the uh, uh, statues on the wall type type thing. You sure. know, we don't want the kids here because they'll mess up our hallway and and things like that, which kind of gets old after a while. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there there were a lot of things that I think I just took for granted, you know, when I was there at North Valley. Um, it was having a core group of people that, you know, that you could count on that were going to be there every single service at mm-hmm. the time the door was open, you know. Um, you know, to see how they served was it was, was amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm just, I'm, I'm praying that God will do here what, what he's done there and other places around the world just use this to reach people, so... Yeah, and there's definitely pros and cons to bigger and smaller churches and younger and older Christians. I remember we interviewed, I don't know if you follow on Twitter, the church curmudgeon. Um, I do, yeah. Yeah, I, we interviewed him. He was one of our first interviews, and he talked about you know the curmudgeons in church and, and things like that. He says they, there's still a lot of value because you can learn a lot from their experience, learn a lot from their faithfulness. You know, they may be... Uh, curmudgeons, but you know they've right. been there. There's a lot you, you can learn, <laughs> and right. if, if you befriend them, they might be less uh, curmudgeony. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. So I think we've I think we've uh, covered the new church topic pretty well, and we're definitely excited for you. And 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 definitely, if you're listening and you're in that area looking for a church, you definitely should should check it out. So, um, so. So one of the things we have in common is we we grew up in ministry life and with a pastor for um, for a father. Um, what type of lessons have you learned um, from that from being a pastor's son? Yeah, so uh, I was actually had this conversation the other day with with somebody. The things I learned at home that was just normal part of life as far as ministry um, and things that I, my dad was teaching me without even knowing that he was teaching me, I learned at, a, at an early age and being around ministry that, that some people, you know, it's, it's taken them, you know, 10 years, 15 years to learn as far as ministry experience. And not that I'm better than anybody else at mm-hmm. all. Just, I mean, things to me that would have been common sense answers or ways to do it uh, to them is, is something that, They've had to learn to grow and ask questions from seasoned, older uh, folks that have been in the industry a little bit longer. Um, and I'm so thankful for the things that my dad taught me. Um, even when I was a little boy, just I didn't realize the, the teaching that was being imparted to me at an early age that was just be, really became part of our our fiber, part of our DNA. Um, you know, my, watching my dad, his example, his love for the Lord, his love for people, were all things that. God was using in my life to really prepare me for what we're doing now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we got, we got our, my sisters and I, we got trained without even knowing that we were being trained. And, yeah. you know, a lot of times people talk about the burden of, of being a, a ministry child. And sure, there's times that that can, that can be that way. But for me, it was a great blessing. You know, I, I praise God for that opportunity to grow up in the, in the ministry home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that answer. Uh, I, I, I relate everything back to sports. And <laughs> it, 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 I think of, you know, like second and third generation baseball players that talk about growing up in the clubhouse and hanging out right. with all these people. And I think, and they talk about the advantage that they have from having fathers that played the game. Sure. It, it's probably very similar to our situation and what your situation is. Right. I mean, I, you, you, we can go back and probably exchange stories, but I remember as a boy sitting across at the table from, you know, what we would say some of the greatest, great heroes of the faith. Yeah. You know, being out, being at a dinner table with Lee Robertson as a boy and wow. Tom Malone, Jack, Jack Hiles, you know, Mrs. John R. Rice and, and things like that. And, and at the time I had no idea, you know, and, uh, but to, but to have that memory and to be around those types, those types of people and mm-hmm. other great men that I didn't, 
didn't even mention at all, but um, it was a huge blessing, and I, I thank the Lord for that opportunity. Yeah, even even last night, uh, Tim and I were working on a project um, with some people from Lancaster Baptist Church with a discipleship series, and I was listening to the recording, and he was going through quoting different scriptures that go along with the lesson that we have, and I'm sitting there without my Bible, just with the workbook, and and he's quoting the scripture, and I'm sitting there, you know, mouthing the words to all these scriptures that are just there, you know what I mean? Sure. And right. And it's just, it goes to the fact that we grew up with the same, you know, with the same Bible, with with all of these different, you know, principles through the scripture, and it's just, it's just kind of ingrained, and, and, and yeah. that's definitely one of the huge, huge benefits. Um, yeah, and the yeah. one thing I'd say to that, too, is also, you know, there might be somebody that's listening and says, well, I, I'm not in the ministry home, and never was around that. The thing is, you get the opportunity to teach your kids mm-hmm. the nurture and admonition of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ, so that they can sit around on a podcast someday and, and tell them what mom and dad taught them. So you don't have to be a ministry mom and dad <laughs> to teach your kids in the way of the Lord. So mm-hmm. I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, and you know, if there's a disadvantage, and I'm, I'm sure there are somewhat of being in a ministry home. I think, I think, I think authenticity can be a little bit of a a, a thing to deal with because. Mm-hmm you are, you know, in a way put up on this pedestal, you know, there shouldn't be, but, you know, as a ministry kid, and then you feel like there's this standard to uphold, and I can't do anything wrong, and I, and, and you start putting on this facade, and, and that's definitely one thing, and and I appreciate, you know, and I don't know your family closely, but just, you know, seeing from a distance, watching, you know, live streams and things like that, your pastor, your dad, yeah seems to be one of the most authentic guys. I, I appreciate his zeal, and I appreciate his excitedness. Uh, I remember one time, it, it was probably 10 years ago, I was watching one of, one of the conferences, and he was leading a choir of men, uh, pastors, uh, I think My Anchor Holds or something like that. Sure. And I yeah. watched that thing over and over and over again because he was just larger than life, just enjoying it and just really, really enjoying it. And he, he started out as the music guy, didn't he? Yeah, so actually he went to Bible college and uh, he studied music when he was in college. That's and, awesome. Uh, you know, as he as he was an assistant pastor, God burdened him um, at a young age to to go out and uh, to take a church. So yep. that's yeah, that's how he got to start. And so you know, going back to the original point, I I think it's really important to be real and to be authentic and 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 let that that light shine unfiltered through this this face of you know being this super christian or whatever right. so uh, i do appreciate that yeah that's one thing about my dad I, as i look back at his life i mean i know there's no perfect parent but uh man he he put before me an example and uh truly i saw in my earthly father a reflection of the heavenly father you know, mm-hmm. and I, I really mean that um i love my dad he actually just talked to him today a little bit and just so thankful for his example that he left me. And uh, some things that he, uh, I caught that he never verbally, verbally said, but just through his example, through his life, how he lived, was a message that I got to watch every single day of my life. Mm-hmm. So, as we're getting close to the end, I wanted to get one more one question in that I had on my mind. You were a youth pastor for a while, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I would like to ask you. Um, because a lot of the stuff on this podcast has been geared towards adult men and uh, married men. Uh, what kind of struggles do you, did you see as far as young uh, boys and, and developing them into men? And what kind of advice might you have for, for any young guys that might be listening to this as far as developing it into a real Christian man? Yeah, I think um, on, along those lines, our, our world defines manhood as something that is really so opposite of what scripture teaches us. If I was a young man, um, so I still am, I think, but I mean, if I was a, a teenager, um, now I'd get myself just so grounded in the word of God and look for biblical examples that I see in, in manhood throughout, throughout all of the scripture and to, to see what does the Bible have to say about me being a godly young man at this age and stage of my life. You know, I think one of the dangers, one of the mistakes that we make is, as as people is that we think that, you know, manhood is 
acquired at a certain age or I'm 18 or I'm 21 and all of a sudden I become this man or I'm 16, I'm taller than my mom finally or I can grow a little bit of facial hair on my face so I must be a man. Well, it goes beyond that and, and, and as leaders, I think that we have a, a job to do and as parents, we have a job to, to do that um, but from the teenager standpoint, the youth standpoint, now I just get so into the Word of God and just see what what does this book say about me being being a man. Obviously, the greatest example we have is the Lord Jesus Christ and, and how He lived every attribute He had. He was the perfect man, and so uh, I, I would do that. I get in Scripture and uh, just mark my Bible and write down some examples of, of biblical attributes that I see in manhood uh, as I read God's Word. Awesome. That's that's great advice. And it's kind of like soul winning or, or different things. It's better caught than, than taught, you know. And, and I think we mentioned that earlier on, you know, being in the ministry and, and ministry household is kind of automatically ingrained without even, even trying. There's plenty of things that need to be taught, but... Um, you know, learning and watching, you know, great right. great men of faith. In, there can be great men of faith that people n- never know their name, and right. um, you need to find those those men and and find find what those those men are modeling that are scriptural and um, right. And I, I think it's great to have friends that are that are a bit older, uh, friends that are a little bit wiser. Um, you know, I've been blessed to have some really good friends that are old enough to be my dad, you know, and, and, sure. and it's a great thing. So, well, brother Tim Treber, you're not brother Treber cause that's your dad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate you yeah, taking, taking the time. And, you know, like I said, we're excited about this church plant. Church plants are always, always exciting. And, uh, I hope you're able to harness that energy and, and, uh, really see, see God do some work. Um, remind us the, the name of the church and the website and where people can find you. Yeah, the name of the church is Hillview Baptist Church, Surprise, Arizona. And our, our website address is hillviewbaptist.church. And our grand opening service is October the 1st, so please uh, be in prayer for that. Uh, we will. We appreciate your time, and uh, thanks everyone for listening. And have a good day. Thank you for listening to the Real Christian Manliness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our show. Now, if you could do us a favor, go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating. That way, other people can find us easily in the rankings. And if for some reason you don't think we deserve five stars, give us whatever you think we deserve. But please explain why we got that rating in a review. Now, make sure you subscribe and have a great day.